Dear children, I am here with the last portion of this chapter, uh, pollination and fertilization. Uh, that is uh, fertilization here. So we discuss about pollination in the last session itself, and today we'll talk about fertilization. So fertilization means the union of male and female gametes. Okay. So here in this case, male gametes, uh, you know, are found in the pollen grains and female gametes are found in the ovule. So before going into the process, first let us talk about the you know, pollen grain and ovule, okay? Their structure. So let us first talk about their structure of the pollen grain and ovule. So this is pollen grain. So if you see pollen grains under a microscope, you find like this. So where you find two, uh, what you call your two covers there are two layered uh, you know uh, structure you find outer one is your exam which is rough and inner one is called in time okay and contains two nuclei okay it contains two nuclei that is tube nucleus and generative nucleus there are two nuclei which are named like this tube nucleus and generative nucleus so in this form in this form the pollen grain is transferred to the stigma. That means in this form, the pollination takes place. Okay, so after that, when it is pollinated, when it is transferred to the stigma, then the development takes place like this here. You see, where what happens is that this poly, uh, your tube nucleus, tube nucleus will be elongated from one of the, uh, you know, from one of the reasons, you know, the tube will be developed. Okay, tube will be formed like this and there in the top of this, you know, I mean, there in the, you know, tube nucleus, first you, I mean, there in the tube, first you find tube nucleus, tube nucleus directing it towards the ovule. All right, so tube nucleus is there. Then, then there you find the other nucleus called your generative nucleus being already divided into two sperm nuclei. Okay, that means you have uh, two nuclei, but by the time uh, you find in this stage, you find the generative nucleus being divided into two sperm nuclei remaining still together. They are in the same cell wall, attached in the same cell wall. All right, so first one is tube nucleus and the other two sperm nuclei you find here in the tube of this you know, ovule. This is how it is growing or developing once it falls on the stigma of the flower with the, uh, you know, at the expense of the sugar produced by stigma. That we'll talk about. I mean, we'll talk about it later on. Then another structure, female structure is there, which is called ovule here, you see. Ovule, ovule has got uh, this kind of structure there, uh, which has got uh, the integument, Containing new cellus, as you see, a new cellus, new cellus, a new cellus contains a lot of you know food in it so that it can feed to it afterwards. And uh, embryo sac is the embryo sac, okay. Then what you see here is that at the end, from where the entry of the you know that pollen tube takes place, is your micropyle. There is a small opening through which that pollen tube afterwards enters, all right. Then inside. This embryo cell, there you find seven different cells. You find seven, okay, seven, seven, three plus three plus one, seven cells you find inside this, you know, your embryo cell. All right, what are they? So, here you see, here at the opening of this micropyle itself, just means there as, as, as it opens into it, so there are three cells here attached like this. The middle one is called egg cell. See, an egg cell. Then other two which you find in the, you know, on the either side of this one are synergies. Synergies, S-Y-N-E-R-G-I-D-S, synergies. Okay, one and two synergies are there. That means three. Then in the center, then in the central nuclear, I mean cell, there are two cells fused. Okay, there are two cells fused, or there are two nuclei fused, which are called polar nuclei. See here, polar nuclei. So that is counted as one only. 
it is counted as one only. Yeah, one only. Though there are two nuclei, but they are fused. Counted as one. It's known as polar nuclei. Then, opposite to this, on the other side, you find antipodal cells. Three antipodal cells like this. One, two, three. Three antipodal cells are there. So three plus three plus one. So seven cells are there inside this embryo sac of this ovule. Okay, so this is the structure of ovule. So now we'll talk about how does fertilization take place here. Now how is the fertilization taking place here? You see now. See, after the pollination, that means when the pollination takes place, pollination means transfer of pollen grain to the stigma. Okay, so once the, uh, you know, the pollen grains fall on the stigma of the same species, then it develops. Okay, that your pollen grain develops here like this. But remember one thing, if the stigma, uh, your pollen grain doesn't fall on the stigma of the same species, you know, pollen grain will die there. It will not, you know, develop, it will not grow. But once it falls on the stigma of the same species, then that time, that stigma produces a kind of, you know, uh, you know sugar. Okay, it produces a kind of sugar. And at the expense of that sugar, this pollen grain now will develop, it will grow. So it will grow this way, you see here, this is how the tube is formed, pollen tube is formed, as you see here, this pollen tube develops or grows like this, okay, and it goes downward and enters into this ovule through this micropyle here, this is what, micropyle, as you see here, micropyle, see here, micropyle, through this micropyle, this pollen tube now enters here, and this pollen tube, pollen tube going into it is all the way guided by tube nucleus remember here tube nucleus as i had already discussed as i told you that there are two kinds of nuclei here one is you know generative nucleus and tube nucleus tube nucleus remains as it is here which will direct them to go into it but this one uh, other one that is your generative nucleus has already been divided into two in the form of sperm nuclei. So this tube nucleus now will guide this tube to enter into this ovule through this micropyle. Okay, so once it enters now, this tube nucleus now will degenerate. Okay, it will now degenerate there because its function is over, because its function was to guide the tube to go into it, pollen tube to go into it, now it's over. So once it enters here, now this is now tube nucleus is gone, is dissipated, is now what you call your uh, uh, is uh, disintegrated, we can see now. Then there are two male nuclei, that is a sperm nuclei. So out of these two, one will fertilize this, you no, know, one will fertilize this egg cell. Okay, one will fertilize this egg cell to make zygote. What is, what is made now? Zygote is made. So once zygote is made means the life started here now. A new life is started here now. Okay, so out of these two sperm nuclei, one will fertilize this egg cell to make zygote. The other one, other remaining one, will, will fuse these two, will fuse with these two polar cell. Okay, polar nuclei. Polar nuclei that in the central cell there is there are polar nuclei will be fertilized by one of the sperms. Out of two, one will fertilize it. The other one will fertilize this polar nuclei of this central cell, making endosperm. What does it make? Endosperms here. It makes now endosperm here. Okay, that means here two nuclei plus one nuclei, two female nuclei here being fertilized by one male nuclei that means two plus one so here triple fertile, triple fusion is taking place here how, how many triple fusion is taking place okay so to make the endosperm here so this is how in this case you find the double fertilization taking place there two times the fertilization takes place one fertilization here you see here fertilizing this egg cell by one of the sperm say sperm nuclei the other fertilization you see taking place here in the central cell, fertilizing 
polar nuclei by remaining one that is form nuclei nuclei nucleus so this is how here you find that the fertilization taking place twice so it is also called double fertilization so this is how you see the fertilize fertilization takes place there in the flower after the pollination so first pollination then comes your fertilization so once the fertilization takes place here what happens is that now this your your ovule this ovule ovule will develop into seed all right and this entire ovary develops into fruit okay remember after fertilization what happens to the different parts of the flower see uh, your uh, petals all right your stigma androsium all those things will wither and may fall off all right whereas that your ovule will develop into seed and ovary develops into fruit okay in some cases that your calyx you see calyx or sepals so these sepals sometimes may be shriveled and you know fallen off or in some cases they are even found intact with the fruit in the shriveled condition so this is all about the fate of the different parts of the flower after fertilization so this is how you know we conclude this chapter also so this is how you know seed is formed okay if there is only one ovule in the flower one seed is formed but there are many fruits where you find thousands and thousands of you know seeds also there in such cases that many ovules are there in the flower suppose if there are five ovules in the flower so there five seeds will be formed if there are thousand ovules there inside thousand seeds are formed like in case of papaya so these are the uh, you know the uh, lessons that we have found in chapter number five that is pollination and fertilization okay this is how we come to this chapter so thank you very much